right, folks, three more days until the viaduct is closed for good. We've been talking about the three weeks until the tunnel opens as well. But we are reminded that as long as that seems, the viaduct will be with us for about another seven months. King 5's Glenn Farley is here to talk about why uh, it's uh, really, when it's going to be actually become history. Glenn. So we're going we're gonna to hit some, some, some milestones here. So we went down to the waterfront today in Alaskan Way. The Sturfus Street, of course, is back in place. And then there's this fence that separates the part of Alaskan Way that we drive on from the new part of Alaskan Way that will connect up or bypass the tunnel a week or more after the tunnel opens. This bridge you're about to see will be driving you from going northbound into downtown from the south uh, and driving south that will happen as soon as the tunnel opens so we all have links to our to four videos from the State Department of Transportation which explains it all on king5.com. Okay Glenn a lot of people are asking exactly how do they plan to tear down the viaduct? Um, so very carefully <laughs> surgically in places the viaduct is literally within inches of buildings there are no wrecking balls they don't use those no implosions or explosions it will not be unlike the 2011 teardown of the south mile of the viaduct. If you've forgotten that, until 2011, the viaduct was actually twice as long as it is now. Only the north mile along the waterfront is in closer quarters than the south mile. In some cases, beams and columns will actually be cut through with saws and then lifted out by crane. Okay, will Alaskan Way stay open during the teardown? Because we've got Alaskan Way there on the bottom, right? Yes, we and do. The viaduct and, above. And, right. So um, the first chunk of the viaduct comes out of Columbia Street, uh, including, so we'll t look at that, including the off ramp or the on ramp then. Then the main section along the central and mostly tourist oriented waterfront is torn out between Marion and Pike Street. That's supposed to be finished by the end of June before tourist season really cranks up in July. The last part of the south area between Yesler and First Avenue won't be completely gone until just before August. So what about the dust, the noise, the vibration? That's a <coughs> big tourist there's, area. There's a summer. plan right. for that. Yeah. There is? There's a plan for that. Okay. So a lot of water. We saw this in the south tear down to keep the dust down, keep the dust under control because concrete gets very dusty when it gets all pulverized and everything else. There's going to be noise monitoring. There will be hours control. So this is not going to be going on at 3 o'clock. So tonight. just so I can get it really clear in my head, in the seven months as they're tearing down this viaduct section by section, you can or cannot be moving down so here on the yes, Alaskan so Way. Yes, you'll be able to drive that. But there may be some lane squeezes you okay. know, as they go through. So remember, you think of the viaduct as a bunch of dining room tables all at the same height, all lined up together. So they're all kind of independent structures. So Okay, yeah. so section by section, okay. they'll right. come down. Right. I want to go to a text message that we got uh, from one of you at home. Uh, it says, is there going to be traffic police at all the choke points in downtown Seattle? All those cars, what do you say, 90,000 cars a day typically use the viaduct? Well, the whole idea here to get people to work from home just so we don't have 90,000 cars a day. You know, maybe we knock it down to 70 or 50 or, or hopefully less than that. Buses, trans, public transportation. Um, yes, the Seattle police, we saw this. Remember, we had sort of a dry run for this during the Viadum period in 2016 when they closed the viaduct as a precaution when the birth of the drilling machine went underneath. Uh, so they had a lot of police out there. We're on First Avenue. In fact, we have had police out here sort of doing a dry run, kind of getting a sense for it. All the checkpoints, I don't know. However, the Seattle Police Department is expected to be part of a large uh, multi-agency news conference tomorrow morning, and that it's some of those, those the granularity, those finer details we'll get into. With that. You know, I, I can see myself accidentally driving into some situation. I'm not going to get a ticket from them, am I? For I driving know. into some weird Detour well, I mean, if you're, I mean, if you, I mean, if you're going down a, a one-way street the wrong way, well, that's going to be a problem. After it's closed, I mean, and there, there are going to be, you know, there are going to be parking restrictions like sure. Fourth Avenue. The last time they, yeah. they blocked off, so you could not park on Fourth Avenue okay, during so the closure. So I think we're going to have that. Hmm. Um, how those would be re 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 be enforced? I think we're going to find 